In the previous session, we learned that a watch, if immersed in water, is subjected to external pressure, and that this pressure increases by one bar every 10 meters. But what is important for us is to know that in order to be officially classified as a water-resistant watch, it must fulfill the standards for water-resistant watches. This international standard applies to the watch, or at least at the watch head, and requires that it resists to a depth equivalent to 20 meters, 66 feet. A water-resistant watch, or any indication symbolizing this message on a case, must therefore refer to a watch that can really withstand this pressure. The method and the units of measurement are thus quite clear. One speaks of a bar or meter to indicate the overpressure that the watch must withstand. And be careful, everything you learned in the past, you can forget it. Because since 2010, new criteria have been established for water-resistant watches, and they are much more demanding than before. Today, a watch is declared water-resistant if it can withstand a depth of at least 20 meters, and it must imperatively guarantee this. This means that there is no longer a distinction between hand washing, showering, swimming or other activities and it must really be possible to bring it down to this depth without the case letting water in. As soon as we talk about scuba diving watches, things change. Even if nowadays we usually dive with dive computers, but it's important to understand what happens during a dive and, uh, if necessary, to know how to use your brain and your watch to ensure your survival. That's why a watch that we are used to can be an ultimate backup for any diver, even today. And if you don't believe me, ask yourself the question, why do you still have to learn the decompression tables to pass your diving license if a computer can calculate it all by itself? So you see, it makes sense. There are several time indications that are important when diving. Let's take a look at this using a typical dive profile for sports diving. We have the start of the dive the duration at the deepest point, the decompression stops if there are any to do, and in any case, the safety stop. And of course, the total duration of the dive. The measurement of time is essential during these steps in order to prevent diving accidents like uh, a lack of air in the diving tanks. Or even worse, the compression sickness. Both can be deadly. So let's see how we can use our diver's watch for these different measures. At the beginning of the dive, this marker here is placed on the minute hand. I won't touch it anymore if I just want to have the total duration of the dive. Or else, once I arrive at the deepest point of my dive, I can put the marker on the minute hand again, and I can control, according to my depth, how long I can stay there, thanks to the same graduation here. If I make decompression stops, or a last safety stop, I simply place the marker on the minute hand each time. I forgot to tell you, it is important to know that the deeper you dive, the more air you consume with each breath and the tanks you carry on your back are emptied much faster. Therefore, as you will have understood, we must not make any mistake in the reading of the dive times. This is why the bezel must be notched and above all of it must only be able to turn counterclockwise to avoid any extension of the dive time in case of accidental hits like this. I imagine that you already feel like jumping in the water and experimenting all that. But wait for the next chapter. I will show you 
the criteria that makes a watch a real diver watch. <laughs>